Hello everybody, welcome to the Union Berlin Rabble. Oh no, wait, no, no, it's not Union Berlin, it's Rangers Rabble. Well, isn't it? It's, yes, it's we not go. Union, it's Union Berlin. Welcome to Union Berlin Rabble. Um, I hope everybody's well, I hope you're all having a, a good night. A little impromptu show um, that I stuck into the chat at about, I think, about quarter past six. Does anybody fancy going on in? doing a wee preview, because it feels like it's been a while since we've been on, even though it was only Monday night. So yeah, we're obviously here tonight to talk about um, Sparta Prague tomorrow. Um, I was going to just keep it specifically on Sparta, but Brian's decided that he's got other stuff that he wants to talk about. Um, so I'm going to have to I'm going to have to bring that up. Um, so yeah, you okay, Connor? I'm grand, eh? Just you're sitting there, you look like you're falling asleep. <laughs> well... You talking does that to me sometimes, to be fair, you know. Um, maybe you need to liven up instead of me. Ah, listen, I've been told all my life I need to liven up. Um, that's nothing new. That's nothing new. Yeah, so hello and welcome, everybody. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, Sasha the Doug is absolutely right. Uh, impromptu loyal. Um, I like it. I like it. Um, I'm also that's, joined... That's Sasha, that's Sasha the Doug for Perth. For Perth, yeah. yes. Perth, yes. That's Scotland, Perth, not Australia, Perth. I do try and avoid yeah. Perth as much as I possibly can because I used to drive there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I'm joined by Rolf as well, who's already spoke, so I'm going to ignore him. And, of course, um, the man who... I don't know how to say this without sounding dodgy. My missus' favourite person on the podcast, Brian. Brian, how are you? Very well, very well. <laughs> I don't know why you felt the urge to wave there, Brian. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you that, Brian, because I'm Mel's favourite, so I'll give, I'll give you that. <laughs> But no, uh, always, always delighted to chat about uh, Rangers, and here we are. Love it. And obviously, as well, Brian, you've met my my stepson, um, who unfortunately chose the the wrong side of Glasgow. Um, but you and him could talk about strips all day. Yes, it was. Um, I actually really enjoyed looking through his his collection. Um, some absolute screamers in there. I think the West Germany top, the old Russia top. Um, just, I really good. Really enjoyed it. Yes. Um, so, uh, obviously, we're here to talk about Union uh, Rangers. Well, we're here to talk about Rangers. Um, and we're obviously here to discuss the Sparta game um, tomorrow. But before, before we get to that, because I want to talk about the press conferences, and I want to specifically talk about a wee bit about uh, what Jack Butland was talking about. It was interesting to hear. And what he had to say. But before we get to all that, um, there was, of course, all the kerfuffle today about allocation of tickets um, and Aberdeen pretty much making an absolute arse of himself, Well, As Aberdeen tend to do. <laughs> they, were, yeah. they were always going to ask for 50% of the tickets. They were never, <laughs> ever going to get them. I mean, they took, what, I don't know, conservatively, for what, 12, 13,000 to the semi final on a Saturday tea time. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. For them to turn around and say, we want fifty, we want 22,000 tickets for the final is an absolute nonsense. I mean, they, they went public at the start of the season saying that they'd sold a record amount of season tickets. They sold 10,000 season tickets. So what they're basically asking for is more than 100% on the top of the season tickets they've already sold. That's nonsense. While, while Rangers would get, what, one in two season tickets, they have a chance at a ticket. I mean, I have this discussion with guys up here all the time that they get to a final against us, right? And of the four of us here, one of us would be lucky to get a ticket in a straight ballot with the, with the allocation that we've got. Whereas if this, was, if this was an Aberdeen podcast, the four guys on it could get a ticket for themselves, a ticket for their wife, a ticket for their dog, and a ticket for their budgie. You know what I mean? So, yep, there we go. My dog's lying down here sleeping. He comes up to produce the podcast and he just lies here and sleeps. So, but yeah, at, they were always going to ask for it. They were never going to get it. As I said before we came on, if they were serious about, about taking more tickets than they got, the league should have said, I'll tell you what, how many tickets do you want? We'll give you that, but you pay for every single one of them up front. And they would just shake themselves and say, I'll give us 15,000. Because they'll be lucky to sell 19,500. Particularly at the price, because I've got a serious problem with the price of the tickets. Yeah, we'll, we'll come to the price in a, in a wee second. Um, this is the thing, in an ideal world, Brian, right, in football, a cup final, it would be 50-50, regardless of what country you're in, what team you support, um, you're going to the national stadium, which is another debate, um, but it should be 
50 50 fair square, two teams have done well to make it to a cup final, etc. 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 Um, however, when you have one fan base who can barely sell out, I don't even know what the Tordry holds is it 18,000 or something? 19,000 yeah. holds, yeah. right? They can't even fill that out when Rangers and Celtic come to town, right? Um, you've seen, you've seen the national stadium now. Aberdeen and Hibs, outside of Rangers and Celtic, obviously, are probably the next two, maybe Hearts, biggest teams in Scotland, right? Hamden looked empty. Hamden looked empty. It was an embarrassment of a semi final, right? Not in terms of the play, because I never seen it. I just seen the pictures from it. But you look at Hamden and you go, "That's the next two biggest teams in Scotland. That's embarrassing, right?" So now, because they've got to a final, and if it had been a final against anybody else, Aberdeen would have went, oh, "Just give us five tickets and a and a pass for the dug, and we'll be all right." But because it's us now, they want to go fifty fifty. When our fans follow the team everywhere, every away ground. Whether it's Europe, whether it, we probably take more fans away to a European game than Aberdeen do get at home. So I don't understand Aberdeen's complaints here about trying to get a 50 50 split when and no weight on this in God's green earth do they deserve it? No. Um, as Rolf correctly pointed out, the, they were harping on and uh, exclama- exclamating that they sold record season tickets uh, for the season this season at 10,000. Uh, to ask for one and a half times that for a cup final, um, just really, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised, but it's it's baffling at the same time. Um, the 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 attendance that they took to the semi final against Hibs, as you say, was pretty pretty embarrassing. Um, as you say, that's Hearts, Hibs, and Aberdeen. You would consider as the sort of the next biggest fan bases behind the old firm. And for neither of those teams to get near selling their allocations is is pretty poor. And of course, then there's the the, the next argument where they're saying it's not even a, a neutral venue. Well, I didn't realise Hamden was the home of, of Rangers, but that's that's another one. But yeah, I mean, I find it just amazing that they think they can just did, suddenly. Did they actually, Brian? Did they actually say that? What? It's not a neutral venue. Well, most of their fan base, because it's Glasgow, um, they say it's not a, it's not a neutral venue. Um, well, I, it's not anybody's fault where the national stadium is. It is where it is. So, you know, I don't know. But at the end of the day, it, they've got an, an absolute cheek to ask for 50-50 as far as I'm concerned. If they, if they, see if they had sold out their full allocation for the semi against Hibs, I would be quite, quite sort of, Fair enough. You've you've shown that you've can take fans to a semi and fill it out. You can you could make a case for them getting it, but to only sell out was it nine ten thousand for the semi final? Sorry, not for me. Can you corner make a case for it being a 50-50 split ticket wise? Are, are we just being the <clears throat> big bad Rangers support who want everything our own way, and because we've got a bigger club and we've got more fans? Of course, we will look for any excuse for it to be a 50-50 split. Is there, is there any argument for Aberdeen to get that 50-50? Um, I find it very difficult to put one forward because, as the guys have spoke about there, you have to judge on past attendances that they've had at Hamden. And the attendance they had for the semi-final, much like Hibs, wasn't good enough. I mean, it's, you know, we must have landed a few countries where you get a semi-final in one year you know, two cup competitions and you've got empty stands because they, they can't sell out. Um, you know, you wouldn't see that at Wembley, for, you know, for talking sake in an FA Cup semi-final. Um, you know, I, I just think when they were playing all those cup finals a few years ago um, against the, you know, other half of the city, I don't remember them being as vigorous in their complaints. And at that time, they might have had more of an argument because actually at that time they were, you know, finishing second in the league because we all know what was going on with us. So they might have had a case back then, but they didn't make it. Um, unless they've actually, you know, they should only get it if they've actually already sold it for me. If they can come and say, yep, there's your proof that we've got, you know, X, Y, Z amount of thousands, there's your 50-50 split, we've got this on demand, on reserve, then give them it, and as Wolf says, they can pay the cash for it up front, um, and if they're really determined to get it, then they shouldn't have a problem with that. 
Aberdeen. Because reality is, whether they like it or they don't, we are the bigger club. We've got the bigger fan base. So we are going to sell more tickets. Quite frankly, there could be zero Aberdeen fans. We'd sell out the entirety of Hamden if we were given the, the opportunity. They would three times, three times over, Connor, at least. Yeah, at least, absolutely. Um, so this sort of stuff is it, it's nonsense to me. I think 19,500, I think that they won't even sell that probably. But that's, I think, a more than generous ticket offering that they're getting and they should like it or lump it, quite frankly. Um, and the idea about the, the neutral stadium thing, I can't. I had to shit my head at that. That's nonsense because it doesn't matter where you make your national stadium. There's always going to be a club closer to it than another club. That's just the way it works. I mean, if it was in Aber- uh, if it was in Edinburgh, for example, um, at, at Murray Park, well, then would it be neutral because Hearts and Hibs play in Edinburgh? So, therefore, that must be a home game for them. That's, it's absolute crap. Plus, they must not have seen some of their performances at Hamden over the last couple of years if that really is bothering them. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, it's Murray Field. Let's not call it Murray Park, shall we? Sorry, let's not Murray Field. It. My apologies. Let's, <laughs> let's not go down that road. <laughs> I mean, yeah, is, 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 is there an argument for, depending on who's in the semi-finals, for club stadiums to be used, like say, Tyne Castle Easter Road for semis? Listen, Brian, that'll argument. never, Brian, that'll never fly. They used to do that, right? Sorry to come across you, Mark, but they used to do that. The reason that every semi-final is at Hamden is they need to pay for the place. Simple as that. They're still paying the bill, bill for, for the umpteen renovations they've done very, very badly. That's why they're all there. Because, I mean, my first ever game was a Scottish Cup semi-final against St Mirren, and it was at Parkhead. Because back then, you only played finals at Hamden. And Hamden was a big day out. Then, clubs like Aberdeen would, have a, would probably have an argument for give us half the tickets, because it's a day out to Hamden, because you don't get to Hamden at any other time in your, your, club, your club life. But now you get to a semi-final, you play at Hamden. I mean, really, there should there should have been no way that Hibs Aberdeen should have been playing at Hamden because what did they sell twenty eight thousand? You know I mean, the two pro- the two problems with that is, as I've just said, that they have them all at Hamden because they need the money, and the other thing is there's not a ground in Scotland between twenty thousand and fifty thousand. There's three at fifty thousand plus, and they're all in Glasgow. The next biggest is Easter Road at twenty one thousand. The next after that's Tyne Castle at nineteen or twenty thousand. So. Mm. The problem Scotland's got from that point of view is we need it for a start. National Stadium shouldn't be in Glasgow, right? When they need, no. when they needed Hamden, they should have knocked the thing down because where it's situated is an absolute joke, right? Hamden should have been rebuilt, or the National Stadium, if we have to have one, should have been rebuilt in Stirlingshire somewhere or in Perthshire somewhere, right? Off to Radar would be perfect, somewhere around about there. There's loads of ground, stick it there. They should have put it there 10, 15 years ago when they did that. You, you, you put your national. Just- uh, you put your national stadium in the capital. Sorry, you just yeah, do. They've got, but they've got. They don't need any more stadiums. They don't need any more stadiums in there. Right? Really. No, but it's it's. But yeah, you, you, you probably have, have got an argument. You, 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 even have you, you know, join. Oh. The, you could just join the Scottish football with Scottish rugby, and both have the main national why, stadium. Yeah. But for, but yeah. Connor, why 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 would? Because I enjoyed the games that were played there a couple of years ago when when we had to use Murrayfield. But why why would the SRU? Who built Murrayfield when they were an amateur organisation, a very well-run amateur organisation? Why would the SRU say to, say to Scottish football, like, come, come and rip our pitch up? Why would Why would they want to do that? They don't need to do that. I mean, I I, I thought Murrayfield was a shite venue for football, right? Because I saw I saw Hearts against Schalke there back in the day because I wanted to go I wanted to go into the stadium, but then Hearts played there when they were when they were doing up Tyne Castle, but mm. well, we played them and it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. But again, you had the situation where there was what, what did we we about sixteen thousand at that game because the bit half basically said how many do you want? And Rangers took sixteen thousand to a league game, you know. I mean, the hand that argument as well. Look, when we played Queens Park in, in Division Three, we took something like twenty nine thousand to an away game at Hamden because the tickets were available. That's the size of our support. You know what I mean? I mean Aberdeen because of the size of the club, because of the size of the city. I mean Aberdeen's problem is nobody in Aberdeen goes to watch them really. Generally speaking, in the actual city of Aberdeen, there's probably more folk leave it on a weekly basis to watch Rangers, Celtic, Dundee United, Hearts, Hibs than actually go to watch Aberdeen. Because hmm. oh, if you go past Petordry on a match day, there's buses from Fraserburgh, from 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 Ellen, from Elgin, from, you know, from from Aberdeen Shire. There's there's not particular. There are, obviously there is people from Aberdeen, but you get you get my point. You know, I mean, they're taking they're they're, they're waxing lyrical in the local press up here. They're taking eight hundred folk to. To Saloniki tomorrow for their game against Pauk. For a club like Aberdeen, that's fantastic, right? Taking 800 to that. 
Hearts took, Hearts took more than that last year. We would probably take three times that. It's just the difference in size of clubs. So why should they get a bigger allocation? No, I know. And look, we could have <clears throat> a debate about this all night and, and I'll just quickly put across my point. I, I had a, a, the same kind of feeling as Connor where I'm, I, I thought that the SFA and the, the SR, you could have maybe have struck a deal and maybe jointly used, owned Murrayfield and used that for the football and the rugby. Or... For Scotland games, you just simply tour the country because 20,000 is enough to go and watch Scotland, especially in some games. The big games you hold at Ibrox, you hold at Parkhead. Um, but out with that, you could... In Scotland, they've done it before. They've had games at Pataudry um, when, you know, the fans up there boo their own players and yeah. stuff like I, that. I went to see them at Easter Road against... against yeah, Easter, Easter Road. You could have, yeah. have Tynecastle, you know. Um, there's, there, there's plenty of stadiums that Scotland could use. We don't need Hamden. It's in a... I mean, I grew up. In Mount Florida, I went to Mount Florida Primary School, right? Um, so I grew up in the area. Hamden's a dump, an absolute cesspit dump. The stadium's horrible. It's not built correctly. When they rebuilt it, they made an absolute mess of it. Trying to get into it and out of it is an absolute nightmare. There is no need for Hamden anymore. There is absolutely no need for it. Um, but we'll leave that there because um, we could have a debate about national stadiums and stadiums on night if we if we so wished. Um, <clears throat> we're a couple of the press conferences in a wee second, Brian. But <clears throat> I'm joking to death here. We are playing Sparta Prague tomorrow. I'm just going to ask us really quickly because I can't breathe. <clears throat> How are you feeling about the game tomorrow? Well, I did say Monday night that I was I was I was looking forward to it and I was fairly confident, but after hearing the manager and what he's had to say and the players available and the players not available. I'm starting to be a wee bit sort of pessimistic now, just purely because of the, of the lack of numbers and just the, the general injury list, because it just seems to be getting worse and worse. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, I was quite positive on Monday, but um, press conferences today, um, news of injuries and the squad availability. Scott right now, not available. Um, He's a doubt. Others, not, so, not available. He's a doubt. He's a doubt, but I, I, well, I'm pretty sure what he means. He's not. He's he's a doubt. He won't risk him. So it's a master stroke. He's no. He's going to be absolutely fine, and he's going to rock up uh, about twenty minutes to go and score a hat trick. It's an absolute master stroke with Clemon. But no, it, I, as I say, I was very optimistic on Monday after the after the weekend, but with the injuries that are mounting up and um, the other players not coming back still not available um it's going to be a how could you put it a cobbled team together i could you could say there's gonna be a lot of youth on the bench and it could even be youth starting because obviously with Wright and a few others not being available so it's yeah it's i think clement's now starting to really lose patience with with the squad injuries and how bad it's all getting because you know he's but unfortunately, him though the squad list was made way before he even arrived, so he's he's kind you know, of just you know been what, stuck you know what? I'll, jump, I'll jump in on that, Brian, because he said that for whatever reason these players weren't included in the squad. Um, yeah. But he doesn't care. He's not using no. that as an excuse. No. He doesn't. He, he, he genuinely does not care about that. It, it's about the players that he's got available to him. And I want to yeah. touch on Roof Corner, and I want to bring it to you. Mm. Roof's back in terms of being able to be in the squad. He did then go on to say that, you know, five, ten minutes is absolute maximum, um, which I don't know how much he can really play a part when, you, when you're only maybe fit enough for five or ten minutes. But it felt this felt almost like it was an interview with a, a, a GP or a doctor or something like that. It just seemed to be all about injuries. And he was asked about... Are they getting to the bottom? I came out roof. Is it going to need surgery, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And he went on to say, "No, no, this is, this isn't a surgical fix." Obviously, he didn't go in to say, you know, what it was. But if it's not, a, if it's not a surgical fix, injury-wise, then what is it? Is that a mental thing? Good question. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> it's it's such a tough one because you know a lot of the injuries he have he's he's had seem to be very similar in nature. They seem to be that same muscle injury in the knee. Obviously, he's had, you know, like the shoulder and stuff like that that he got, um, which that, I can't tell any player. That's just unlucky. Um, 
but if it's not a surgical fix, then maybe it is mentality thing. Maybe it's also, um, maybe it's more a sort of physio thing. Maybe he's just not done the recovery processes properly. Um, and that might in part be because obviously there's been times over the last couple of years um, we we Chio, we, we Bill, that, you know, we've been so desperate that we've needed somebody to come in to change something up front that the minute he's came back and been fit, we've went, well, we've just got to play him um, and, and give him half an hour, 40 minutes an hour, even if he maybe can't manage it. Um, I mean, it's I just don't know how you resolve injury problems like that when they're constantly recurrent. I just, I fear that you can't. And I think sometimes either you've got to say, right, is it going to be worth putting all this time and energy into it? Are we going to have to get, you know, whatever you need for the medical team and say, right, here's the, the, the plan going forward and put all that energy? Or are you just going to have to say come January or, or, or the summer, whenever the, the contract is, is coming up, cut your losses and, and, and move on? Um, because, listen, I like Ruth. I think we all do. I think we all know that a fully fit Kima Roof is arguably the best pure finisher. Um, certainly in our squad, I think even in, in, in the league, uh, as a whole, um, at his very best. But, I, I mean, there will be a psychological part uh, as well because clearly when you're getting injured so often, there's going to be something in your head every time you go in that park thinking it's only a matter of time before I get injured. Because, you know, we all say it. Every time you see him go down, you know, you, you could crash diamonds with your ass cheeks because you can see, you think, well, fuck, he's going to be out for months now again. And he must think that in his, in his own head as well. Um, and maybe that's why it's taking longer sometimes to come back. But I just don't think, unfortunately, I don't think you can resolve it. I think it's the best one in the world, he, you know, that's what he's blighted to be. Maybe he needs to step into a lower <coughs> um, sort of league, lower standard where things aren't as fast-paced and high pressure as you're going to get um, at Rangers to rebuild himself. Well, do you know what? Just on that, Wolf, um, and... I think I've said previous that, you know, we can sometimes read just a little bit too much into manager comments on, on in, in these press conferences, etc. We've we done it with Gio when he didn't really say much. We've done it <clears throat> with Bill when he said a little bit too much. But channel member Ian Thompson makes a very, very good point. Um, he said, I like the comments from Kamal regarding trying to find a way forward. With Ruth. Now, this is the part where I say sometimes we take maybe what we want to hear, but... Meaning that if we can't get him fit, then we'll move him on once and for all. But he did, he, he was trying to stress the point that he's sent Ruth to people that he knows to try and get to the bottom of what's wrong with him. But how long can you continue to try that? Well, the, we've got to keep trying it for the sake, for the sake of Kim Marrow's and, and his career. But I mean, he's out of contract, I believe, in the summer. So that's as long as we'll, that's as long as we'll have him because nobody's going to sign him in January because he's on a he's on a hefty wage, reportedly, and he's never fit. So nobody's going to nobody's going to take a, take a risk on that. There's not another club going to come in and say we'll take over his contract at that sort of money. So if he has to leave on a free, we won't, we won't get anything for me. If, if we could offload him in January, it would just be somebody taking over his contract, so we wouldn't get a fee for him. Um, it's a shame because as Connor says, he is he is probably the, the best goal scorer in Scotland, the best natural striker in Scotland. His finish is tremendous. He's just never fit. I mean, it was curious that the manager said today that he's back in the squad, but he can only do five or ten minutes. You know, that would tell me that he's good, probably going to, be, going to be on the bench tomorrow. But he's fine because we need we need bodies on the bench because we don't the squad's not not really strong enough in Europe to not have a player that can feature at some point on the bench. But, I mean, if he's only going to give us five or ten minutes, chances are we won't see him, um, depending on how the game's going. But I don't think, to answer, to answer your question, we need, we need to keep persisting with him. And if the manager sent him to people that he trusts, and I believe that Michael Beal sent him to, to, to um, medical people that he trusted him, they can't get to the bottom of it. Is, is it a mentality problem? Is Kemar Roof one of these footballers that will only play if he feels 100% fit? And I don't think there's a professional footballer on the planet who ever plays 100% fit, apart from possibly the first two games of a season, because they'll pick up knocks and strains and little bits and pieces. So I don't want to say it's mentality, because I'd like to think it isn't. Is he is he not happy at Rangers? Has he never been? I don't know. I mean, is he is he is he just seen out his contract? I'm, 
I wouldn't like to. I wouldn't like to think so. But I mean, successive managers have said they've they've put them to professionals that they know and trust. And we still can't seem to find the bottom of it. I mean, they said I'm sure Michael Beale, who I know spoke a lot of nonsense and, and you know spoke far too much, as you said. I'm sure. He, I'm sure he said at some point at some point last season or in, the, or in the summer that they'd got to the bottom of K Maru's problem and it was only a matter of time. Well, they obviously haven't got to the bottom of the problem because Philip Clemont came in and said, we don't know what the problem is. So, mm-hmm. we don't know what the problem is. We just have to go sit with it until his contract runs out or unfortunately let him go for nothing. Well, you never know, mate. The cryo chamber might sort everything. You never know. Yeah. Um, channel member Brian, um, long-term supporter of the Rangers Rabble. Thank you very much, Brian, for your super sticker. That is greatly, greatly... Um, appreciated <clears throat> right away for roof brian in terms of injuries um raskin still out um Suter's still out matondo trained today but obviously is nowhere near um ready to come back into the team um as it looks to now injury wise it's not the worst it's been but it could be a hell of a lot better could be yes it could be um, that's an understatement. I don't think the team that started um, against Hearts at the weekend won't be too far away from what it is because of just... No Balogun, no Yelmaz. I know Yelmaz didn't start, but no yeah. Yelmaz in the range. So. Yeah. So, I mean, apart from the obvious ones that you've just mentioned, you know, the rest of it will pr- pretty much pick itself purely because of availability and injuries. Um, you know, Lammers will probably start, unfortunately. Um, I don't think he had a terrible game against Hearts, but <clears throat> there's a lot there's a lot to improve on with him. Um, Daniel will definitely start, I would, because uh, he although he didn't score at the weekend, I thought he was very busy, um, very enthusiastic, and his general sort of uh, link up play was very good. So it, I just don't, I mean, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about McCausland. You've just looked, uh, brought up there. I think McCausland could make an appearance. Um, as the manager said, he doesn't care if they're 17 or 37, if they're good enough, they'll play. So <clears throat> there's a good chance McCausland could make an appearance. So well, I'm um, only 34, Brian, so I've still got a chance. Absolutely, yeah. I haven't got a chance because I'm over 37, Martin, so that's me. Martin, do you, not, do you not count your school days, no? No, no, you never count school days, Wolf. You should know that by now, you'd be. You'd have received a letter for the king by now if you counted school days. <laughs> but I mean it's oh, it's gonna be interesting to see what he does with Campwell since he took him off at the weekend. Um because yeah. obviously Campwell was Are you just trying around. to take away all my questions, Brian. Is that what you're trying to do here? Just try to take away all no, my no, points. No, no, I, I, you know what I mean. Campwell was just running around like a headless chicken and he probably would have got sent off at the weekend if he wasn't subbed. So I think that's harsh. No, nah, he was no, nah, he was I, I think he was going to get sent off if he just left him on. So it's it's more a case of he just I think Cantwell's just maybe just trying that bit too hard. He just needs to rein it in a bit and just let things naturally happen. But I this just don't true, think Brian, things going to be far Brian, off what it was. Brian, this is true. Wolf was in Bill's <laughs> class at school. That is a I can that is a hundred but Wolf, you'll you'll back that up. Not only was I in his class, I was his form tutor. <laughs> Look, and there's some, there's something else that getting back to the football corner because everybody watching and there'll be a lot of people who regularly tune in and thank you for that. But there might be a few new people who haven't tuned in before and um, will know what I'm about to say here. I put a message in the group to everybody, at, like I say, about quarter past six, saying, "Look, just fancy jumping on, doing a wee quick preview." Um, it feels like a, it feels like ages, even though it's only been Monday since we've been on. 20, 30 minutes tops. Absolutely 20, 30 minutes tops. We're now half an hour in, and we've probably got at least another half an hour to go. So <laughs> so let's try and go on a, um, get back to the football. Now, one of the issues that we have is... Mark, no, sorry, Mark, on that subject, the bad news is my, my, my missus is away tonight on a, for a meeting tomorrow, so I'm in no rush to get off this room. We might be here a while. Well, I mean, that's it. We're all, everybody just set your alarms um, for about half past ten. Um but no, but Connor, that Michael Beale's been questioned a lot for his his squad list, you know, and the, the players that he picked. 
I don't want to jump down Michael Beale's throat too much because he was he kind of had one hand tied behind his back because of this whole the Scottish players rule. Um, but like channel member Harris saying, I suppose we that's a fair comment. The squad list Beale picked is baffling. Let's put us in this position. Is that it's fair? I think it is fair to in the main, yeah. Um I mean, obviously, as you say, there was obviously issues with the, the quotas and stuff like that. I get that that was an issue. But when you look at, you know, for example, leaving Red Van Yelmaz out, that's an act of madness. You've only was got it a necessity, though, because of the, because of the, the, the situation what, that he was in. What was it, though? Because to me, you've got to look at that. Barisic hadn't been firing in all cylinders. He hasn't been all season, you know. He's had good games, bad games, you know. <clears throat> and there's been rotation between them. Yilmaz got left out because at the time he had a knock and was just coming back in to the team. Um, but that's always a daft reason to leave some out because he was on his way back, so he was going to be fit eventually. And it left us in the situation in the last game where we had no Barisic, we had no Yilmaz, therefore we had no left back. Um, but to play devil's advocate on that very point, Connor, Yilmaz was starting to get slightly like Roof, where he was coming back and he was getting injured, and he was coming back and he was getting injured. So if Michael Beale, and I'm not trying to defend Michael Beale, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here, but if Beale was told, by the way, you need to pick a shot in squad because we don't have enough Scottish players, you're going to have to leave either A, B, C or D out, then can you know maybe understand why he did go for Yilmaz? Because maybe in the back of his mind he's thinking, if I put him in the squad, he's going to get injured again. Well... Yeah, but I'd counteract that by saying that, you know, Barisic has, has had one or two knocks as well. And, they, 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 you know, and what he should have been looking at is, do I need to have Dujon Sterling in the squad? Um, when James Tavernier, to his eternal credit, I must admit, has almost never been injured. You know, he picked up that one injury, I think it was over in the Belgium when Nathan Patterson then came into the squad and we see what happened there. Obviously, he broke out. But in general terms, James Tavernier is never out. Um, and he's certainly less likely to pick up injury. So, why not have two left backs there um, to give yourself options when you know both have been inclined to pick up a knock or two and, and miss a couple of games here and there, rather than hedge your bets that one of them is going to stay fit long enough um, to get you through the, this group stage. And obviously, I know we, guys like Leon King and stuff like that could, could maybe have filled the void. But again, you know, I, I go back to it. We shouldn't have to be um, forced into using these players in these games, they should be used because we feel they're ready and that they've earned it, and not because you've got to throw somebody in. Um, and even like Balligan, Balligan's more understandable why he's not in the squad because, to be fair, Michael Peel wasn't really playing him, he, he seemed to be brought back more as a as and when you're needed, you'll get game time. But as we've seen in the last couple of games under uh, Philip Clement, all of a sudden. You know, he's, he's looking like the Balligan that we had prior. You know, he's had a couple of cracking games. Um, and we're all thinking maybe it would have been good to have him there. But again, Suter's obviously picked up an injury which you can't foresee. So you can't really blame Michael Beale for that. But I suppose I can blame your internet provider for just freezing. I suppose I could always do that. Um, it happens at least once a pod off. I think we're going to need to maybe sit down and have a wee meeting. Um, we Connor and Connor and discuss this this internet thing because he always freezes in the rank positions. Um, but if you if you want to pick up on what Connor was saying there, well, I mean, <clears throat> it's easy to have a go at a manager that's left about the squad that he's picked when he was when he had a he was in a situation where he had to make a, a choice and look maybe he's made the wrong one. Yeah, but I'll go back to what I said. I'll go back to what I said at the time when he when he um, when he, when he named the squad and you're right, the squad is very 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 thin in certain positions. But as, he, as Mr. Beale said himself before he left, if you're putting, the, for example, if you're bringing in Yilmaz, who are you leaving out? Because for every, for, because of the, the lack of Scottish players, they had the maximum other other players in the squad. So if, you, if you're putting in, for example, Kieran Dowell, who's not in the squad, who do you leave out to put him in the team, who, in the squad? You know, who do you leave out to get to, to get Yilmaz in? Do, do you leave out Barisic and you're in the same situation, you've only got one left back? What do you, or, you leave out? Sterling? Sorry? Sterling, surely. I mean, he's but not the reason he put, but the reason he put, I'm only playing a devil's dick advocate here. No, yeah, no, no, totally. I'm just saying that's, that's obviously, you know, that, but, that's but, but, the, but the reason he gave for putting Sterling in was Sterling can play 
both sides left back and right back. Then Sterling came out and said, well, I don't like playing at right back. You know what I mean? So, but the manager said he can play at both and he can fill in at centre and half. And again, Sterling said, I've never played at centre and half. So, obviously, he had a different perception of what the player could do to what the player, the perception the player's got. But that was that was the, the reason he gave for putting Sterling in. And it's a plausible reason if it works. So, it, it's a difficult one. The squad, the squad's a, the squad is a joke. The European squad is nuts. It really is. It's so thin at the back, it's no, it, it's no real. And the thing that worries me uh, while we're on the subject of, of the squad tomorrow, as I believe the manager was down in Greenock last night watching the B team game and the SPFL Trust Trophy or whatever, or whatever they call it against the Adrianians. And the, the word that I heard was he was there looking at somebody specific with Thursday in mind. Now, it can't have been Kieran Dowell because he's not in the squad. It can't have been Bailey Rice because, as I was told in the chat earlier, he's not eligible because he's not been with us for two years despite the fact he came through at Motherwell. So that would only leave me to think it's, it was John Lefeco who apparently was culpable for both the first two goals last night. So we might be really in the shit tomorrow. Well, my hope would be he was looking at Aaron Lyle. That would be my hope. Um, but but he's not going to start Aaron Lyle. He's not going to start Aaron Lyle over like Todd Cantwell or something like that. The problem we've got is at the back. No, I know. I know. I'm just, my own personal preference would be bringing Aaron Lyle into the first team because I think he's good enough. Um, oh, 100% yeah. agree with you. I 100% agree with yes. you. And I'm, and I'm still, I'm still trying to get over the shock from earlier on that Bailey, that Bailey Rice isn't in the European squad. I just yeah. find that find that incredible that he doesn't qualify. But that's Euro, that's European rules for you. Isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Anyway, let's get off Michael Beale's back. Because Michael Beale's gone. He's done his best, and and you know overall he failed. But we we'll, we shall move on from the Michael Beale chat, Brian. And uh, well, actually, before I come back to a few things that were mentioned at the press, I'll see if we just look ahead to the game um, tomorrow. If we are being brutally honest with ourselves. And it hasn't been that long since we played them over in Prague, right? Um, for about 60 minutes, if my memory serves me right, they battered us, right? And probably could have, should have scored at least four goals, right? And I think that's me being slightly generous to us, right? Um, the team's grown then, grown since then under Clement. We've got better. Um, we've had maybe one poor game against Hearts at home, maybe, in terms of the putting the ball in the back of the net, it took us till the last minutes, etc. But we've got better. It's at home. Um, how much of a different game will, should this be tomorrow? Uh, totally different. Because I think, as the managers uh, alluded to today, <coughs> the difference when a uh, full eye blocks on a, a European night that he's heard, because this is his first European night, um, he can only imagine that the, the boost that it's going to give the players and the players have already said that they feed off the 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 noise and the encouragement from the fans so uh, we all know what Ibrox is like in a, a European night um, if if the team get off to a good start the fans get right up for it and <clears throat> they get right behind the team and I, I, I would like to think there's the way that Philip Clement, uh, his tactics and the way Rangers have been playing recently um, that we'll get off to a good start and hopefully we'll build from there. But as you just said, this uh, the Sparta Prague team gave us a nearly a good, it was, the, it was a bizarre nil-nil because we should, as you say, lost by a handful and we somehow came out with a nil-nil. So <clears throat> we've got, can't underestimate them. They're a, a very good team, but I would like to think at home to anybody that we've, we give ourselves a chance in the Europa League, definitely. And channel member Ian Thompson is saying I have to stop using the word presser. Um, um, that word is for pods that take themselves too seriously. So I, I don't know what you say if you know one going forward, maybe just the manager talking to a bunch of people in a room or something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll say that or something. Um, I didn't I didn't realise that that was for pods that took themselves too seriously. And I think anybody who watches us knows that we certainly don't take ourselves uh, too seriously. I mean, for God's sake, I've got an empty bowl sitting behind me. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, I mean, I, I, I take that point. I take what Brian's saying, Connor, and it's all should have, should have, would have, could have, blah blah blah. And and yeah, we came back in that game and we created a few chances away in Prague, and we possibly could have, could have nicked the win. Um, but again, I'll, I'll put it back to the point that you know they are a very good team. Uh, you, you, there's no shying away for that. They 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 are one of the few teams I think. Um, not a few teams, there's a few really good teams out there, but I don't think they come to Ibrox scared of us. Um, 
No, no, they're certainly not coming to Ibrox to hear this. Um, I mean, you know, their, their form has been pretty much as good as ours has been. They lost their, their direct game after playing us and then they've went on a wee run there um, in the last three. So, you know, they won't have a fear. Um, and they do have very good players. I mean, listen, we know, particularly in the first half, our goal led a very charmed life. Um, you know, Jack Butland coming up with some some huge, huge saves. Um, you know, again, <clears throat> people have said it before, you know, it's it's quick becoming no longer McGregor moments and, and, and they're becoming Butland moments because some of the saves. Um, so we've got to be careful of that. Um, <clears throat> you know, do you think, defend- Connor, Connor, sorry, do you think that Jack Butland's ever tried to save a shot while basically touching the back of his net, uh, his net. Um, he's probably tried. Whether he's, I don't think he's probably successfully done it. Be. Um, but listen, the guy's probably been. Well, not probably. He has been the standout signing of the, of the summer. You know, we needed a goalkeeper to come in. We, we, you know, we big shagger retiring and and looking at the options we had. I don't think. Either of us here would have fancied John McLaughlin as number one, or even young Robbie McCrory, as, as good as I think he's been when he Shout out to Robbie McCrory, by the way, getting pulled up to the Scotland squad. Yep, absolutely. Um, and I think he it, it deserves to be in uh, there in the mix because I think he's a good Why? keeper. Well, because he's a, he is a good keeper, and it's always good to have he won't play, but it's always good to have the experience of being at those national camps um, and getting the understanding of, and the feel for it because. Sooner or later, when he probably when he leaves us, because <clears throat> nobody's unseating Jack Butland unless Birmingham come in with an outrageous offer to buy him off us, um, he will get first team football elsewhere because he's he's good enough to do that. And you don't have to play. I mean, look at Liam Kelly; he's playing at Motherwell. So yeah, but he's playing. Go. Yeah, but that's the point I'm making. Though when he does go and play for a Motherwell or St. Murn or whoever he goes to. Um, then he, he'll get the opportunity to play instead of just being in the squad. So I just think it's good experience for him getting his toe in the water. But uh, anyway, aside for that, that's a, a side point. Um, <laughs> you know, as I say, it, it'll come down to us, I think, trying to dictate the midfield tempo because you're at home. And in, I don't care who comes to play us at home, we are expected to go for it, to attack the game, to not be sat back and, and defending for our lives. Um which we've done a, a fair bit against Sparta. Um, so we've got to take our chances when they come in the defence, however that shapes up. Um, because I don't know, with Ben Davies, for example, I don't know how sharp he's going to be. Um, so we'll need to see how that goes. But we're going to have to just, as best we can, let let hope the midfield do its job properly. Um, and that the, obviously the defence back them up because they'll come with no fear and they'll try and get the points. But we know... It's big for us to get the points because if we lose tomorrow night, which I don't think we will, but if we do, then then it's back to the walk stuff for the last two games. If we're going to yeah. go, yeah, yeah, I'll come. I'll come to that in two B seconds actually, because um, that's a that's a fair point. Just quickly, Wolf. Right, I don't very quickly. Right now, when I say very quickly, Wolf, I mean not one word answer, but keep it shortish. Right, because I don't want to stick on this point. Um, but yeah. Ryan Jack and Robin McCrory called up to the Scotland squad. We'll come back to Sparta in a wee second, folks, I promise. Um, Ryan Jack and Robin McCrory called up to the Scotland squad. Now, I'm delighted for Robbie to get called up to the Scotland squad because he's a Rangers player. Um, I don't care about any other team or any other team's players with regards to Scotland or, or whatever. I just focus um, on Rangers. However, if I was a supporter of another club or I was a goalkeeper at another club who may or may not be as good or better than Robbie, but was playing consistently week in, week out, I'd probably feel more than slightly aggrieved that Robbie gets called up to the Scotland squad. At this juncture, if I could point you in the direction of the podcast that we dropped yesterday about the system and bringing through young Scottish players, that's the problem that Robbie McCurley's brought in because there are no other Scottish goalkeepers playing in Scotland. I mean, Liam Kelly... As Connor rightly says, came through at us playing at Motherwell. He got he got his first cap because it got him a cap, and it was a it was a friendly game, and it got it got him a cap. Right, young Robbie McCrory is twenty five years old. Twenty five, so yeah, yeah, young Robbie McCrory. Right, if he was Connor's right, if he was at any other club, he'd be first choice, and he'd be he'd be he'd be Scotland's first choice if he was playing every week. 
and and he would be. There's no argument about that until Craig Gordon comes. Back. Craig Gordon comes back. If he gets back fit and play for Hearts, he'll become he'll go back to being Scotland's first choice again because he's probably the best Scottish goalkeeper out there. I don't, I don't think so. I think because of the fact that, and I don't want to turn this into a Scotland podcast, but uh, with Clark bringing in that boy, I can't even remember his name, um, for down south to be the goalkeeper, I think he'll be the number one for the foreseeable. Angus Gunn. Angus Gunn, that's it. But again, guy who'd never, guy who'd never stepped foot in Scotland until he played for us. Exactly. exactly. He, he's Scottish because his dad, Brian Gunn, who used to play with Aberdeen, is obviously Scottish. No, did he but shop in that, the team? Is that what it was? Right. Yeah, but that but see that's that's the pro, that's the problem. That's why Robbie McCurry get called up. If, and delighted for Robbie getting called up. But it's because there's no other there's no other Scottish goalkeepers playing in playing in Scotland. I mean, okay, you've got you've got Angus Gunn who plays by default because of who his dad is. Didn't consider himself Scottish till he was a chance to play for Scotland. So and that's for Ryan Jack getting called up. Ryan Jack should tell Scotland to poke it because we we need him fit. But I get why he wants to play for him because it's every football who can play for their country. Uh, you said keep it short, so my last comment on it is, in my opinion, Rangers players should never play international football for anybody because it's all about Rangers and international football could finish tomorrow for all I care. I know, but you, you would think Jack Ryan would be more robust, wouldn't you, and be able to do international... Oh, sorry, Ryan Jack. Um, yeah, He's never, he's never living that comment down, come on. It doesn't matter if he was only in the door two minutes. He's absolutely never living that comment down. Um, one thing the manager did mention in his press conference, Brian, oh, through the barrage of injury questions, he didn't really get many questions on, on the actual game. But I, I liked, because I... In fact, I'm not even going to compare it, right? I liked what he said when he said, I don't care who we're playing at home, um, if it's Prague or it's Real Madrid, I want us to have the mindset of we're going to go out and we're going to win. He wants. He's not saying that that's what we're going to do, but he's saying that that's what he wants your mindset to be. There may be other managers out there who manage other teams in Scotland with a sizable budget who play in Europe who, before a competition even starts, talks about how they're not going to win it. Um but our manager certainly wants to drill it into the players that no matter who you're playing, no matter who we are playing at Ibrox or anywhere, then you give 100% and you go out and you try and win. Absolutely. And that's, let's be honest, that's that's been that's been Rangers' way for decades. Um, it's only so, maybe, not so much, maybe not so much the last three or four years. <laughs> I'll say, I was just a way to come to that. The last couple of years, though, maybe say that the manager hasn't been very um how could you put it positive thinking and going out to win but over the piece rangers teams have always went out there to win regardless of who they're playing we've beat very good teams in the past so there's no reason why we can't beat a sparta prague team albeit they're very good um we've we've slayed bigger teams than them in the past so it's it's I'm I'm absolutely delighted that the managers came in and said that this is the man the mindset he's wanting because this is the mindset we need. You want to be a winner, you've got to believe you've got to beat everybody. It's as simple as that. And it's just great to hear a manager being so vocal about being so positive and getting that mindset back because <coughs> excuse me, if you don't have that mindset, you're not gonna win anything. It's as simple as that. Well, on that corner. Jack Butland, obviously, and I, I'll come back to team selection in a wee second, right? But Jack Butland spoke to the media as well, and he was talking about, he was asked what's different, um, why has there been a kind of resurgence so quickly um, under Clement? And he basically went along the case of talking about the messaging. The messaging's been a lot clearer. Um, I don't think this was in any way a dig at Bill, by the way, because Jack Butland doesn't strike me as that type of guy. Um but he said that the messaging has been a lot clearer. He's not told us everything that he wants to do. He's told us there's going to be a lot more, but he's just starting it off very, very simple. And the way that, that Clement comes across, and channel member again, Ian Thompson, you know, if he told me to do something, I don't think I would question his reasoning. Clement just seems to have this way about him where if he tells the players, you're going out there to win, and we're playing Brazil for 1998, we're going to go out and try and win. 100%. It's absolutely, and that's the mentality that we should have, and that's one of the reasons that he's endeared himself so quickly to the Rangers fans, because you can see it, the confidence uh, is starting to come for the players. Yes, obviously we had a um, a bit of a scare against Hearts at Ibrox, but, you know, the, they showed that spirit and that mentality there. You know, they weren't going <clears throat> in that game just looking for the, the equaliser, because as soon as they got it... Um, very quickly they were back at it searching for the winner um, and he said that himself like, he doesn't care um, 
what stage of the game it is if we're down a goal we're not just looking to equalise and get a point we're looking to score two goals and win the game proper mentality to have that even the weekend there I guarantee you um, and again ugh, you know it's no just having another dig at Bill or anything like that because it wasn't just him that this was a problem with that semi-final at the weekend there'd have been a hell of a lot more of a <coughs> sort of hoo-ha made about that um, going into it um, under other managers you know you'd have had Bill and Van Bronckhorst telling you you know how fantastic a side Hearts were, how it was going to be such a difficult game, how we were going to have to dig in and grind out. No, come on. He's saying, no, no, I, I want us to go out there and dominate the game. I want us to go out there and, you know, and, and do our jobs. Basically, that 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 mentality we've not had for such a long time. Um, it's, it's the kind of mentality that guys like Walter Smith, um, you know, ingratiated into the, the, the change room. It doesn't matter how you get the job done, you get the job done. Um, and you don't and so, to... sometimes under water, it was it was hectic. Man. It was, it was. Well, listen, we go to a UEFA Cup final under Walter Smith on 90% draws, um, basically. But we we done it because that, that was always the mentality. Um, and I'm glad of that because speci- specifically domestically as well, European football kind of takes care of itself, but it's with the domestic stuff because I've been, and I don't know if you guys would agree, but I've been sick fed up over the last couple of years, listen to our managers tell us how difficult it's going to go and be for us to play against certain teams. We are Rangers Football Club. Why are we talking as if there's a fear? Uh, oh, we're going to Tyne Castle. This is going to be a hard game. You know, Levy are going to put up such a difficult fight. No, we should be going there and saying, no, no, we're going to go there. We're going to want to dominate the game and we're going to go out there to win the game. Instead of frightening ourselves by saying, well, you know, these games... Um, and I know they have been that for us, but that's partly been because of the mentality, because they went into it thinking already, this is a hard game, instead of thinking, we're the better team, we can put them to the sword. But Connor, it's been, it's been like that since since Ali McCoyce was a manager. You know what I mean? I mean, even 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 Steven Gerrard, he was, he was talking about going to Pithodio like, like Aberdeen were fucking prime Barcelona. You know what I mean? It's it, And you're right, it has to stop. I mean, for me... The players, the players have looked at uh, Philip Clement since he's come in. The, the, the guys won three consecutive league titles in Belgium, which is a comparable league to what to what we've got here. Right? He's got forty international caps. He knows what he's talking about, and as a lot of people said in the comments, just looking at the guys, he's an imposing figure. If he if he tells you to go out there and bust your ass, you're going to go out there and bust your ass, aren't you? You know what I mean? Because I mean, on I think it was it was on Sunday in the ninety second minute, the game's done. We're three one up. The game's done. And he's berating. I think it was Dessers for not for not tracking a guy back. You know what I mean? There's not. We haven't had another manager in recent years that, that would have, that would have done that because you see, they were just like, well, the job's done. He just he wants us to be to use a to use a term from the last time one. He wants us to be relentless. I can't even say it. Relentless. You know, and that's uh, if, we need that uh, back. We need. If he, if he asked you to rob a bank and blame it on your wee granny, you would do it, wouldn't you? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You would do it. Um, can I just say a big massive thanks to Des Mason for the um, super sticker. Again, Des is always always supporting out the channel, always supporting the podcast, and he has been for months and months and months. So thank you very, very much, um, Des. One thing, Brian, that Jack Butlin said, which I found really interesting was, and I, and I think this is really positive, and I think this is probably one of the main reasons why, you know, and I'm not sitting here saying that we're going to go and win everything. And you know, Philip Clement's the second coming and all that, and everything's going to be rosy at the end of the garden. What I'm saying is it's looking good right now from where we sit, and you can only comment on where you are just now. But but Jack said that it feels like he's been here for years, it feels like he's been here for ages. Um, which when in, in, a, in a good way, obviously, in a good way. Um, so the fact that he's had that kind of impact on the players, I mean, it's 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 fantastic. Absolutely. Um, and as you say. And obviously, uh, but why is everybody coughing tonight? By the way, what's I going don't on? Know. I think I've got the start of a chest infection, I don't know. Um, but obviously, with Butland just arriving as well, it's amazing to think that you know these these players have taken to come on so quick. Um, I wasn't too sure how how quickly he would be able to turn this around. I was very skeptical that you know, I honestly thought this was going to be like a uh, aircraft carrier turning around because it would take ages to turn things around and get it back on the on the right track. But he's he's it's been he's a private well. He's done very well to get this 
team playing because let's be honest, <clears throat> during Beale's last couple of games, last few games, it was you couldn't see anything. You couldn't see any shape. You couldn't see any desire. There was just nothing there, and everybody was doubting what man. It, there was folks saying even Guardiola couldn't get a tune out of this team. So for him to come in and get a get what he's got out of these players so quickly is big massive credit to Clement and for doing that. Um there was a lot of people doubting what he was saying that he was gonna, you know, come in and change things and get them back playing. But I didn't have much sort of hope with this with the, the squad and how they were playing, but fair play to him, he's he's done it and you know I'm 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 I'm, I'm actually looking forward to uh, seeing what he's going to do in the transfer markets in the in the future, and just I mean, as as folk have been saying, you know, you love listening to press conferences now. So it's you know he, he's, know he's great. He treats he treats the the press with the absolute contempt they deserve, and I absolutely love it. See when you see when you pay more attention to the press conferences, but you do realise just how hopeless our mainstream media are. It's actually quite embarrassing. And can I just say while we're on the the subject of embarrassment? See if it all goes wrong tomorrow night and we get a man sent off or something and Sparta win the game comfortably at Ibrox. I, I would imagine it's probably going to be Kevin Thompson commentating. Um, Kevin, if you're watching this, which you probably are because it's the Rangers rabble, everybody watches, please don't embarrass our football club <laughs> with some nonsense commentating. Um, that's all I ask. Anybody commentating in the game tomorrow, if you're associated with Rangers, don't embarrass us if it doesn't go well. Take it on the chin like a real man and stop greeting halfway through commentary. Embarrassing. Please don't dare. Right. Well, start in terms of starting lineup, um, there's been loads and loads of talk about Cantwell because we are we are just no use to a manager being proactive and making changes at half time from a tactical nature, especially when it involves somebody who we perceive as one of, if not our best player. So of course, because that happens, because he makes that change at half time, people then start assuming that. You know, it goes from as little as, oh, is there maybe are we going to be an issue there? To Cantwell's never going to play again. Come on, hates him. Um, so let's set the record straight. Cantwell surely starts tomorrow night if he's fit. If Cantwell's fit, Cantwell starts tomorrow and Cantwell has to start in the middle of the park. He can't start him out wide right because it's a waste It's a waste of a jersey. So if he's, if he's fit, he starts and he would start in, in, play, in place of Sam Lammers. Whether he moves Lammers out to the right is a different, a different question altogether. But I'd be playing them where Lammers played on Sunday. That was far too short, Wolf. You, you freaked me out there. You absolutely freaked me out. Look, you know what you're doing, and all look at a smile. That's that's. Well, you make, well, you make up your mind. Do you, do you want a, a diatribe or do you want it short? You know what I mean? No, I, I only, only wanted the Robin McCrory point short. Then you've just went well, and you've absolutely threw me. No, no, I'm moving on. You've done it. I'm moving on. Um, aye, corner. What Wolf said. I mean, don't take too long to come back up from you. You know, I'm trying to make a point here. I, I was waiting for you to finish the question. Just what Wolf said. Discuss. Just what, just what Wolf said. Mm -hmm. um, I'm angry with him. I'm not happy. To be fair, I think he's made the point fine. I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't. There's not much more. There isn't much more to add. I mean, look, you know. No, but, no, but surely, in all seriousness, Connor, Cantwell, for me, if he's fit any day of the week, he starts. If he's having a bad game, you take him off. Just like any other player, if they're having a poor game and they've been booked, you take them off. But he, he does. if he's fit, he starts. Of course he does. You know, there's no question about that. And I think sometimes with these things, what you find is, you know, something like that, it turns into a storm in a teacup. You know, there's absolutely nothing to it. What he done, and I get it, you know, as you say, we're no used to seeing our managers being that proactive. You know, it usually has to go totally, you know, arse up before we then go, and maybe we should make a change to it, or maybe, you know, realistically. Um, you get Tesco, internet Tesco. Tesco internet would be better than the shite I get, I can tell you. Um, <laughs> but no, with, he will be a starter. Um, I think he's just a bit, you know, getting himself back into the groove of things just now. He's maybe no 100% there. Um, you know, Brian said before the pod, and he's right, he's trying a bit too hard. And I think in that situation, come on, looked at it and obviously thought, you know what, it's a cup semi-final, it's too big a game to take the chance, just calm down a bit. Not a problem with you, but you're going to sit out this half and we'll put Scott Wright in. Um, and he's done that and it paid off. I mean, typically, Scott Wright is now a doubt for tomorrow night. Which <laughs> of, course. Ah, of course he is, that's just standard. Um, you know, that, 
wouldn't have been a Rangers player if he wasn't he, but it worked. And at the end of the day, when Subarat walks the hands, I don't care who you are, you're no too big for a manager to hook you at half time if it just simply isn't working. Because some every manager worth their salt will do that when they have to do it. Even the, some of the best players in the world have been hooked in games at half time because they've just not been up to the standard in that in that match, not overall, just in that one match. So I think people just need to calm down. He'll come back into the squad, he'll be a starter. Um, when come on a season thinks he's ready to get back into it again. Jack and Lundstrom, Brian, um, is that mm. the other two in, in central midfield? Is there any other options? Because they, we say that, you know, Ryan Jack has to be managed correctly, albeit, you know, there's been, what, four days or whatever since since the last game, four or five days or whatever, so it's a plenty of rest. Um, but, I mean, I, I can't see any other duo in the midfield than Jack and Lundstrom. No, I can't really. And to be quite honest, the way they've played the last couple of games, it's it's hard to argue that it wouldn't be them two. Um, I'm just kind of hoping these cryo chambers are getting used to the max now that they've discovered they're still there at Ibrox. <laughs> and I'm hoping Ryan Jack's using them as well because he, he really... Well, they're all can have but they're all can have but I get your point. Uh, uh, but it's it's the way that the, the way they've played the last couple of games, uh, Jack and Lundstrom has been tremendous. I think, I think Jack's actually been the the sort of anchor of the midfield, which has allowed Lundstrom to be a bit more positive and sort of drive him forward because I think Lundstrom was trying to do that too much and I don't think that's Lundstrom's game. I think he's much better. He's far more positive and he's got that burst of energy which maybe Ryan Jack doesn't quite have. Um, Ryan Jack's good at sort of slowing the game down or sort of dictating play a bit more, whereas Lundstrom's got that sort of little burst of pace where he can get, you know, get past a player and then... Uh, find the winger or the striker. So I think they complement each other very well and they've played very well together in the last couple of games. So I think you're right. I think it will be Jack and Lundstrom with A and other in front of them probably can't well. And then of course Wolf the question is if if Scott Wright's not fit enough to either A be in the squad or B start or C come on as a substitute. Um the question then is going to be does Lammers play? Um, if Lammers if Lammers doesn't play, does that open the door for Ross McCausland? Or do you think, being that we are Rangers and being that you know being a youth player at us, regardless of who the manager is or what the manager says, if you're a youth player at Rangers, it's extremely difficult to catch that break. Um, does the manager just go Lammers, Sima, Danilo? I think the manager does go Lammers, Sima, Danilo, but. He'll be sitting thinking, well, if, if Lammers doesn't cut it, McCausland is going on at the first available opportunity. I think is McCausland that fair, though, Will? Is that fair for the manager to do that? Or do you think McCausland deserves an opportunity? I think McCausland starts on Sunday against Livingston, no question. So, you know, he, I think he'll get told that. So, look, you're on the bench against against Sparta. If I get a chance to put you on, I'll put you on. But Livingston, you're definitely starting. You'll probably be told tomorrow that he's definitely starting on Sunday. And similarly, Tom Lawrence will probably be told, be told the same because I would expect Tom Lawrence to come in for for something like Ryan Jack on Sunday because that Livingston pitch does Jack no favours. But I mean, Livingston's another chat for a, a bit later in the week. Uh, don't want to do, do Friday's pod just now. But yeah, I think that I think that'll be the front three. Oh, we can carry on Friday if you want. You know what I mean? But, no, 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 we'll, no, no, no. We'll not, we'll not quite do Livingston yet. We'll get, we'll get Sparta out of the way first. Um, Tom Lawrence is an interesting shout, Connor. Um, I would obviously never expect him to start tomorrow. Mm. Um, but depending on how the game's going, can we see him getting a, a few extra minutes? I think so. I think, um, obviously, as you say, it will depend on how it's going. Uh, I think if we're up against, you know, going our way, I don't know that you would take the, the chance to do that. But I think, you know, all going well, you know, maybe we're one or two up. Then, yeah, you know, listen, Tom wants is, is a smashing player he really is he's a good he's, a, he's, he's that smashing that he's just broke his internet um who who knew it was possible for Connor's internet to go down three times in an hour i mean even, even under my worst days that never happened that never ever happened um i brian just quickly then finish up on tom lawrence as i can see that you're messaging away there in in the background um tom lawrence mere minutes you're on mute, Brian. You're on mute. Come on, yes, but it's so finish line. Typing, so I didn't want to make a noise. Um, <coughs> oh, Tom Lawrence is an interesting one. Oh, you want to carry on, Connor? 
Sorry, no, no. Crack on, Brian. Um, Tom, Tom Lawrence is an interesting one. Um, he obviously came on against Hearts and was very bright. It's, 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 it just depends how much the manager thinks minutes-wise he can sort of cope with just now because he's been out of a hell of a long time. And it's obviously, he's not a player that you want to rush back too quickly and, you know, get injured again. So you want to give him the right load and the right amount of minutes so that he's he's able to sort of build his build his match fitness back up to 100%. So it's just one, he's one of these guys that I would say he's, he's got to be careful with and just not, not rush him. Give him maybe a, a half or 50 minutes, 55 minutes and see how he is. Um, but he looked very good against Hearts. He came on and he was, um, you know, very bright. So it's a good show. Could be. Could be. Right, okay. Um, predictions, really quickly. Predictions, Wilf. 3 nothing to the Rangers. And? Well, a goal scorer, first goal scorer as well. Always. <laughs> First goal scorer will be Danilo, because he's Brazilian and he only costs six million. <laughs> I wouldn't go to bed for that. Um, Brian? Oh, I'm I'm going to go for a nail-biting 1-0, nil, Tav. Honestly, does my not Connor? <laughs> um, well, I mean, my predictions on this are generally dreadful. I am, although I have to say... As bad as your wife, then? Well, hmm. Aye, <laughs> on a par, I'd say. The, the, the prediction I made for the Cup semi-final in this was wrong, but I did make the right prediction in the Scottish Football Show uh, Predictor League when I said 3-1. Um, so I'm going to stick with that prediction and go 3-1 again. Um, <clears throat> and we'll see... Uh, you know what? We'll see Ryan Jack to get a goal. Final Rangers, John Lundstrom with the first, Danilo with the second, and a tab penalty for the fourth. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. Oh no, we can't we can't we can't get another penalty here, Martin. I mean, oh, come we on. absolutely <clears throat> we absolutely <laughs> listen, uh Will Brian Connor, thank you so much for jumping on last minute for this little <laughs> impromptu show that's lasted nearly an hour and ten minutes. Well Martin, Martin, before before we go, can I finish can I finish I the way we start? Can I, I can, can I finish the way we started? Yes, I want to finish the way we started, right? Go for it. And I'd like to congratulate Union Berlin on getting a point in Naples. <laughs> Done. Well done, Union Berlin. Congratulations. Uh, I can't wait till Wolf starts his new podcast next week. The Un Union Berlin Loyal. There we go. <laughs> Union um, Berlin. I, I missed that. I missed that because your Wi Fi is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no, missed that. Listen, listen, I'm ending the show. Stop talking. Say good night, Martin. Which I know is difficult for you guys. Um, thank you, Will. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Connor, for jumping on last minute. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you, everybody in the comments. Everybody who um, interacts with the show, it's great. Everybody with the super chats, etc. Follow us on all the social channels, the links for which are in the description. We are, of course, sponsored by NordVPN. You can get 63% off of a two-year deal, plus loads of other deals as well. Um, if you click the link in the description, and if you use it through that link, you help support the podcast as well. We are back tomorrow night for build-up, roughly about 40, 45 minutes before the game starts, and then we'll be back, of course, for reaction. Back on Friday for our normal Friday podcast, and we will take it from there. Well, who wants to do who wants Tuesday, to do that? Next Tuesday, half past seven. Live next Tuesday, half past seven. Live, there we go. Spot on, right, folks. Thank you very, very much for tuning in, and we shall see you all for the build up tomorrow night.